Okay, so this first question is, uh, this person writes, this is the first holiday season our larger family will be together in a couple of years. And I expect there to be tension and division over hot button topics like politics, mm. vaccines, masks, <laughs> etc. How in the world will we, will we not kill each other? <laughs> oh man, that's like every family I bet. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's a good point in the question because it's been probably a couple of years for a lot of people. I mean, there's probably a reason for everyone to skip out last year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with numbers where they are, there's a lot of people probably getting together. And so it's been a, it's been a minute, right? Since, uh, since some of these families have gathered together. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking about it in my head. <laughs> I mean, probably the, the, um, there, there's just no way around it. I mean, this is going to be awkward. And so my first initial gut reaction was, man, just go for it and just make it super awkward, right? Let's just come wearing a, maybe a Trump face mask and like a, you know, let's go Brandon t-shirt or something like that. And just go all in and just make <laughs> just it super it. awkward. Just go, just, just go for it. Right. Just detonate the bomb right away. Right. Right. Now, so, I mean, um, but honestly, there's, there's just so much um, that probably is going to be going on in that space where I, th I definitely think it would be helpful to prepare mentally, emotionally before then. Um, uh, I know myself as well. This is, this is applicable to me. I'm going to have to deal with this issue as well um, in different contexts with family getting, getting together. So, you know, I think um, the way I would describe it to a client um, who has this issue, um, tension with politics, vaccines, strained relationships, um, <laughs> dating relationships that maybe extended family don't really uh care for or appreciate that kind of thing yeah, yeah. um it, there, there's a wide range and so let me let me just go bigger picture here for a second and just say whatever the issue is whether it's vaccines politics um you know who is in a relationship with who um those kinds of things you've got a few options here <clears throat> and i think the best way i can kind of frame it is if you think um about how um, aggressive you want to be or how lenient you want to be, um, there are three strategies I typically suggest for people. Okay. First strategy is what I call the uh, detached strategy. Okay. Um, which is create as much space and distance as you possibly can. That would mean potentially, um, A, that could be as far as, hey, maybe don't go, don't show up for some of these things. If you, if you think it's going to be that contentious, where it's going to be more damaging for your relationships. And it's just, there, there's just huge um, open wounds in the family. Then it may be an option to simply say, Hey, we're not, we're going to just do our own thing. Okay. Um, it could be even a little bit less aggressive to simply say, Hey, we're going to show up, but we're only going to show up for like the dinner portion. And we're going to maybe show up for an hour and then duck out pretty quickly after that, just to limit the interaction and, and make sure we don't have as much exposure time in there. Okay. So that's the detached strategy. Um, the second strategy I would say it's called a harmonized strategy, which means that basically you're going to go in mentally thinking, okay, I disagree vehemently with the people around me. I have maybe even some sore feelings with the people around me um, in my family, but we are family. So we're going to gather together and you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to buck up. I'm going to put on a smile. I'm going to try really hard to just observe that we have differences. And even if people are going to try to provoke the conversations or try to poke at the bear, so to speak, I'm going to do my very best to make an intentional effort to uh, show up and put that smile on and try to just get along for the sake of harmony, for the sake of unity in the family. I'm just going to make that a conscientious effort. Hopefully everyone else has maybe the same strategy in mind, but even if not, if someone's going to say they're going to come after you and say, Hey, what do you think about, you know, this certain political bill or whatever like that? Um, you have to be conscious to try to make sure you avoid those uh, landmines entirely and just try to harmonize. The objective in there is harmonizing. The longer you can harmonize, the longer you can stay in that space. That would be the second strategy. Okay. The third strategy is going to require um, a little bit more effort, and it's what's called it's what I call disrupt. And that means that you're going to uh, maybe even before, during, or after, simply call the elephant in a room and say, "Hey, we have differences, mm -hmm. um, and we need to work through those differences. We have to talk about those differences, and I want to because." I want to have a relationship. I want to be able to be at peace with you, mom, dad, or whoever. Um, but maybe not at this time. This is not the best time to do it. So let's set aside those differences and maybe we'll get together before or after and talk through them. But we're going to address them so that if you do that, that leaves you space in that moment to say, hey, we can put those aside for just a dinner 
and we'll figure those things out at another time. So that would generally be the strategy that I would recommend, the one that I use personally myself, um, just kind of trying to think, okay, what's really realistic here? Can I detach a little bit? Can I harmonize? And where I need to, will I disrupt and kind of push into it? So that's okay. kind of the framework. Does it make sense? Yes, I, I think so. So let's name the three of them again. Yep. The first one where you you either don't show up or you show up for only certain portions was detach. The yep. Detach. Yep. Then that's creating some space. Create some space with some boundaries right there. Then number yep. two is the the harmony. Harmonize. Yep. Harmonize. Yep. And that's where it just put a smile on and just get through the dinner. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to mean um, authentic reconciliation or unity. It just means that we're going to try and get along right now. We're just going to tr- do our best to get along, get through this. Don't take the bait. Don't offer bait. We're just going to, mm-hmm, great yeah. pie. Have some turkey. Yep. That's the stuffing. Right. That yep. kind of thing. And then the third one was diffuse. I get that right? Disrupt. 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 That's, that Maybe means... The opposite of diffuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I know if you kind of think about it, it's kind of the opposite of harmonize. It's like, we're not going to just pretend yeah. we're going to, everything's gay. It's actually calling it out and saying, hey, we have issues that we need to work out. I want to work it out. And we're going to disrupt the relationship a little bit by having conflict. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're going to isolate that conflict to other periods of time, like before or after that, uh, that family meeting. So. And it, it would seem like that, the disrupt uh, approach would work would work if the if the tension is already has already been identified or experienced right so if someone's coming back to the family and they think oh i'm going to be thinking one way or having a certain opinion and i'm going to shock them they, there would need to be some sort of other kind of conversation leading into uh, how you said like hey we're going to kind of set aside our differences. If, if the family doesn't know that those differences exist, then there's an extra conversation that would need to happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming if the, if the family at large doesn't know that differences exist, you can get away with harmonize. You can, do, you can go out low undercover and just simply, Hey, right. Show up and no one knows that like, you don't need to bring it up. Like, Hey, I have a very different stance than you on this issue. Right. Okay. Um, and I think that, I, I think that might be important for some to hear that for the sake of the general well-being that it may be appropriate given the circumstances to not raise that up and just say, Hey, sure. it's okay to just grin and bear it for one meal yeah, for yeah. one afternoon, evening together. That's okay. Have the hard conversation on a different time at a different time when maybe that yeah. you know, expectation isn't there or it's not a heightened kind of day. Is, is, is that right? Would you say for sure? Right? I mean, I mean, you kind of think about it the same way we have, uh, you've heard of some of the principles. If you're going to have a hard conversation, don't do it by text or email. Like you, you want to have that conversation in person or, or at least over the phone to where it's just you and the other person you can really talk through. <laughs> Definitely don't have the conversation over Facebook or, or social media. It's same kind of principle here, but you don't, you know, you don't want to have that conversation at a large family dinner. That's the worst time to air out your differences. Um, least amount of ability to maintain control over that and, and stabilize it. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, if you don't, if it's not known, then no, you don't need to bring it up. You can bring it up before or after later on, um, but just make that a conscious effort to say, we're going to try and protect that space as much as possible. Right. Great. Okay. I would venture to say that that was helpful. So hopefully okay, so it works for me. So yeah, <laughs> it does, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and thanks for that. I think that's always helpful to hear from the therapist that, Hey, this is, this is advice. I, I implement in my own life. That's always fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So